So here we are, guys. Uh, our maiden voyage with Talk Shit Sports. Angel O, Jaime Mota, affectionately known as... Jimmy Wee. <laughs> you know, that, that's something that was given to me by a co-worker a long, long time ago. But look it up. You know, you'll understand why <laughs> the Jaime Mota, you know, whatever. Anyways, hey, Angel, big weekend. Uh, super wild card weekend. We've got six games, three on Saturday, three on Sunday. And uh, right off the bat... Sorry to say, I don't think so. <laughs> but anyways, we'll get to that. Hey. Colton Bills, the first one. Bills are favored by six and a half, yeah. playing at home. First time since 1993 that they reached the playoffs with a 13-3 and record. Uh, but we know what's happened to the Bills in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, mean, could, you, could, you could spell Bills with four L's, guys. That's the way you spell Bills in the postseason. Four L's because that's... You know, for Super Bowl losses. Yeah, no, I remember when I was a kid. My actually, my grandpa was a Bills fan. Um, he used to have the old school Bills hat with the round one with the Bills, and um, it was very depressing for him. But um, you know, they look pretty good this this year. I mean, Josh, Josh Allen. Allen. Josh Allen has been incredible. This kid really has, uh, you know, the team going. Uh, not only is he a great quarterback. But the fact that he's so mobile and that defenses need to, you know, make sure that they keep yeah. him in the pocket. Other right. Otherwise, he destroys them. He's got a cannon on him. The best thing about him, he's from California. Shout out to California, the West Coast. Um, you know, I don't like any of, either of the teams. I mean, you got Phillip Rivers, who um, longtime Chargers on leading the Colts there. But uh, I don't think they have a shot. I mean, I think the Bills are going to really blow them out. Yeah, well, I, I, I agree. You know, Felipe Rios... Uh, Philip Rivers, he's been uh, the guy, uh, you know, we know him from his, his days over at, at the Chargers, uh, who now have a, a great quarterback. Um, but uh, I think Philip Rivers, at some point, you know, the ugly uh, Philip Rivers is going to come out and he's going to throw an interception like he usually does towards the end in the most inconvenient time. That's Philip Rivers. Yeah. That's that was for all the Raider fans out there, you know, that are, are rooting for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, they have to root for someone, you know. They won two games at home, Raider fans. Two games at home, you guys and the Giants. Uh, the same thing. Oh no! But if we would have done this, no, you didn't do anything. The Giants are complaining because Doug Peterson decided to put it some fell at the end, and he took out uh, um, how do you call him, uh, Jalen Hurts, and you know. If uh, Washington would have lost to the Eagles, then the Giants would have been in. Look, if you only win six games, you don't have, you can't complain. No, you can't complain. So shut up, go home. <laughs> well, the next game we got to talk about is my team, the Rams. Now, look, we're in the playoffs. Okay, you know, I know Jaime's team's not in the playoffs. No, unfortunately, no. I'm a Dolphin fan. My team is I'm in the a Miami playoffs. guy. Yes, and you know the Rams were in the playoffs and. Um, I really think we can upset the Seahawks this game. The one thing is Aaron Donald has been playing against Russell Wilson. He's played him for the last seven years. That's 14 games, guys. If there's anybody that knows Russell Wilson, it's the Rams. And and Aaron Donald said it earlier this week. He's like, we know what he's going to do. We know how he likes to roll out. We know where he's going. However, it's still dangerous. It's still you know a guy that can cause problems great defense yes you know they've done a wonderful job with uh Metcalf and and everybody else you know keeping Metcalf to like two receptions you know in the first game uh, in 2020 second game was a little bit better for uh for the Seahawks however they're playing at home N not that it's going to make a big difference because the 12 is not going to be there um but I think if there's anybody that can make plays is Russell Wilson, and I think that's the one thing lacking with the Rams. No matter what, whether it's the Wolfman, John Wolford, who a lot of people are saying that should start over Jared Goff, who apparently is ready to start, come back. Remember, he had a, a fractured thumb, uh, and, and that's his throwing hand, first and foremost. You know that if, if you're having problems yeah. gripping the ball, somewhere down the line, he's going to throw a dead duck. He does it by himself, no matter what. <laughs> he doesn't need any help. Jared Goff, to me, is probably, uh, 
you know, the one weak link with the Rams. Well, I don't know. Whatever. Whoever we, whoever starts, we, we can win the game as long as we don't turn the ball over. But, you know, one of the things I know about Russell Wilson is his wife hangs out with Kobe Bryant's, late Kobe Bryant's wife, Vanessa. Hope Maybe Vanessa will take Ciara and Russell out the night before and, you know, we'll have a hangover. <laughs> and we got this. Whatever. Who cares? We take the win. We're going to upset them this week. I'm telling you guys, Rams win this week. Wow, uh, th- that's, you know, it could happen. It could happen. They're very evenly matched yeah. teams. And, you know, the defense, I think that's the strong point for, for the Rams. Definitely Aaron Donald and the defense. Jalen Ramsey in the back, you know, he's the one that pretty much shut Pick down six. Derek Metcalf, uh, Metcalf. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But the next game we got here is the Bucks and Washington. I don't even know if we need to talk about this game. Uh, Washington should even be in the in the playoffs, but I, I got to give it up to Alex Smith, comeback of the year. Oh, what a story. I mean, what a story. You got Chase Young, who I think I mean, is going to be all over Tom Brady's face. He's going to be he, in there all day long. We know that uh, Tom, yes, he is no longer, you know, a Patriot. He, he's, he's done great. However, I mean, I, as much as I hate to say it, 40 touchdowns for Tom Brady this year. Is incredible, but we have seen that if he gets pressured, we saw that in New England. We're seeing it now in Tampa with the Bucks. You put pressure on Tom, and I don't care what you say. TB12 uh, turns into pick six. <laughs> That's what it turns into. Um, you know, I've never liked Tom Brady. Uh, a little bit too smug for my taste. But um, you know, even Bruce Arians, his coach this year, has absolutely. Uh, throw him under the bus in a couple of occasions when he's lost games because he didn't throw to the right receiver. Uh, you know, he, Mike Evans was open in a couple of games. He threw it somewhere else. It turned into a pick six. That's why. Pressure, Chase Young on Tom Brady. I'm calling that the upset of the week. You think Washington's going to upset? I'm calling Washington to upset Tom Brady. Tom is going to go home <laughs> crying to Giselle after this weekend. Well, I mean, it's not a bad thing to go home crying to Giselle. I mean, I, I yeah. wish I was crying to Giselle. But that's another story. Don't worry, we'll get you a Giselle. Don't worry. <laughs> but you know, I, yeah, I mean, I, what a story that would be for Alex Smith. I mean, that would be incredible to be Tom Brady to come back like this, and even Ron Rivera. I mean, what a, a awesome coach. Uh, cancer this year, and yeah. Uh, overcoming that, I mean, that team's faced a lot of challenges, and that would be that would be a huge, huge upset, big story for the week. So you know, you know how they say in in, uh, in Spanish, el menos peor. That's what Washington was this year in the NFC East, <laughs> <laughs> the the best of the worst, basically. Because yeah. man, that that whole division was absolutely atrocious. Uh, which, by the way. Um, how about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys? <laughs> they just fire their defensive coordinator, Mike Nolan. It makes no no difference because as long as Jerry keeps calling the shots and he wants to be the owner, he wants to be like Al Davis. He is Al Davis. Uh, he is Al Davis. No, yeah. but I'm saying calling the shots that way, yeah. that team is never going to get back to where it once was. With who? Jimmy Johnson. That's right. Jimmy Johnson is the one that made him. How about them Cowboys? Why? After Jimmy Johnson left because he's from the U. <laughs> That's right. It's all about the U, baby. But I think Jimmy's doing good with his commercials oh, on TV. Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy doesn't want to come back. <laughs> Jimmy doesn't want to come back. He's out there in you know Key Largo living the life. But yeah, yeah so the Cowboys fired their defensive coordinator, Mike Nolan. The, the defense got a lot better towards the end of the year. Uh, but somebody had to go. Somebody had to be the scapegoat. Um, you know, uh, they were... I, I, I don't know. I, I think overall, they would have done a lot better had Dak not suffered that horrible oh, for sure. uh, leg injury for sure we'll see i mean hey man i would say like like l davis drove the raiders into the ground jerry jones doing the same thing well that that's the one thing jerry jones likes he's a control freak and unless he gives up the reins and and let somebody come in there and be the gm and actually uh you know somebody that knows football knows the x's and o's uh yes he's a billionaire he he knows how to handle a business. However, it, it's one thing to handle a business and another one to be able to to know. And, and the one thing they teach you um, in management school is hire the very best. Right. And he doesn't do that. 
because he wants to keep control of everything. Absolutely. Um, you know, like in business, I've been, you know, fortunate, blessed to be successful in business and you got to get out of your own way. Yeah. If you're not good at something, hire people better than you to go do it. And I think we've talked enough about the Cowboys. I'm already, I'm tired of talking about the Cowboys. I got a lot of friends that are Cowboys fans and we're just tired of talking about the Cowboys. Well, they're going to be on the couch watching all the games this weekend anyways. Yeah. So anyway, let's move on, move on. So who do you got next here on Sunday? Ravens Titans, a matchup, you know, a rematch of last year. Uh, Derek Henry, King Henry, the only the eighth running back to uh, reach 2,000 yards. He did it this year. He is a monster. He's like a, a linebacker running at you. Try to tackle him. It, it's almost impossible. He ran all over the Ravens last year. Plus, Lamar Jackson, you know, threw a lot of picks. Uh, Lamar Jackson has not been good in the postseason. Um, I expect the theme to continue. A lot of people think that, you know, the Ravens are going to do it this year. Um, I, I just think Lamar is is prone to mistakes, especially if you put pressure on him. You know, uh, yeah, the, 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 uh, this game, I don't know. It, it could go either, either way. But Derrick Henry, you know, he's a, he, what he's done this year is remarkable. But there, no one's, who's going who's gonna to beat the Chiefs? Or the Bills, like it's this. Game, well, it's okay. the Chiefs and the Bills. Yeah, to me, it's Chiefs Bills yeah. in in the championship game in the AFC Championship game. One of those two to me is going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, uh, Bears Saints. I don't even know. Uh, I mean, the Bears sort of backed into the playoffs. Yeah, uh, because the Cardinals. Sorry to uh, good buddy of mine, Rolando Cantu, with the Cardinals. Kyler Murray and company just couldn't come through. They finished two and five. Uh, the last seven games of the year. Yeah. Th- that's not the way to get to the playoffs. A lot was expected of the Cardinals. They couldn't. But, you know, it didn't matter that the Bears lost to Green Bay in the final game of this of the year. They backed into the playoffs, and now they get to face Drew Brees and the Saints. Uh, we'll see what happens with them because, remember, Alvin Kamara was out because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, their entire running back... Uh, you know, roster uh, wasn't able to play the last game because of that. Uh, so we'll see. Sometimes that has a little effect on on how teams play. Uh, sometimes they don't. But Al Kamara is a beast as well. Absolutely. Well, Trubisky. I mean, this is his shot to be a starting quarterback if he wants to be next year. He's got to win, upset the Saints at least. And I mean, who knows? You got Mac. If Mac can get to, uh, who, I don't know. This game, I, I don't know. But I, I think. Oh, uh, Saints all the way. I, I, I Saints I are going to go marching in, and yeah, the, the, the Saints mean, are going to roll. They're yeah. going to roll the Bears. As a matter of fact, I think it's the biggest line. It's nine and a half. Wow. The Bears yeah, right nine and a half. As we you know do this show, are nine and a half point favorites. The over under is not that big. It's only forty eight points, but that would mainly come on the side of the Saints. I think because. Uh, yeah, and they're playing the Superdome, and, so. the, and they're playing in New Orleans. Even, there, the, even though there's no fans, the weather's yeah. not, there's no weather there to help out the, the Bears. Exactly. So yeah, that's the one thing that Saints would be able way. to help them. Browns and Steelers. It's been 197 games, people. 197 games since the last time that the Browns qualified to go to the playoffs. Baker Jeez. Mayfield did it this year. Uh, since 2002, that's the last time the Browns were in the playoffs. Wow. Uh, amazing stat. Wow. Amazing stat. Just, it's a little bit unfathomable. 197 games uh, that the Browns have been in the playoffs. Was that when they had your old quarterback from the U? Uh, you know what? No, I don't think so. I don't think Bernie Kosar was then back then. I mean, uh, I don't remember. Browns, it's been forever. It, it's been I mean, forever. I you know, they, they've gone through a, a myriad of coaches and quarterbacks and, and you name it. They even had the number one pick in Tim Couch way back when, who was a complete bust. I mean, Juju Smith said today, they're the Browns are the Browns. They got a couple of good players, and that's it. Well, the, the Browns have yeah. a good roster. It, it's just... They're the Browns. Just, it, it's the Browns. <laughs> it's the Browns. The coach is Some, out, too. Somehow. The coach is out. Oh, that, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Stefanski's out with yeah. COVID, so he's not even going to be there for... The, so, yeah, it, it all looks as, as if Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers... Yeah, uh, are they, going to advance. You know, they're uh, only three and a half point favorites, though. Um, which is crazy because they beat, they just lost, they beat them with the second string. Exactly. I mean, it was the second week. string. Ben yeah. and most of the guys didn't play in the yeah. final game of the season. TJ Watt 
is going to be running around the, that field chasing oh, yeah. uh, Baker Mayfield all day long. All day, yeah. He, and he, all day And long. Baker always fumbles in, in the key in the final seconds of the game or key moments. He's always fumbling the ball or turn, turn it over. So we got the Steelers on that one. We got the Steelers. We got the Steelers. Now, it's you know what? It, it's crazy when you look at it this way, but it's pretty much experience. All timers in the playoffs this year. We got Phillip Rivers, 39 years old. You know, wow. it, it, it's time for him to go, uh, I think. He's got to take care yeah, of his yeah. nine kids. Wow. I, I mean, He's nine kids. <laughs> that boy is busy. Uh, Drew Brees, 41. Uh, you know, he got hurt last year. Got yeah. hurt this year. Yeah, he uh, Broken hurt. ribs. And, and you can tell he's not the same. Nope. Uh, they don't go down the field, you know, as much. Uh, Michael Thomas, who was my pick in, in fantasy draft, and he couldn't do jack this year because he was hurt. Um, well, they predicted him to have a big game to, to, uh, this weekend. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Uh, Michael Thomas, to me, uh, was a bust this year in, in fantasy. Oh, for sure. Uh, but Drew Brees, 41 years old. This may be his last hurrah. As a matter of f- fact, to me, no matter w- how it ends, I think this is it for Drew. Uh, he, yeah, so. he thought about it at the end of last year. This year, I think, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's time for him to retire one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, but time to go, Drew. Yep. Uh, and go and enjoy the uh, beignets at Café du Monde. Uh, yeah. That's that's what I got to say. Or, or, or San Diego where he's off-season. He's always in San Diego, you know? True. One of the beautiful places to live. Yeah. They, they yeah. didn't want him in San Diego, though, uh, Chargers. Yeah. Uh, Tom Brady's 43 years old. He's this guy. My age. He's, he Crazy. says he's going to... Continue yeah. playing till he's 45. He showed wow. this year that he can, you know, that he can play. He's got a great roster around him. I, I think it's the best offense that he's had in a long, long time. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you've got uh, a great core of receivers. Uh, Mike Evans, who, you know, uh, had a, a hyperextension of his knee in the last game. We'll see if he plays. Uh, but Bruce Arians did say that one thing. When Mike Evans went into the doctor and he got an MRI and the MRI, you know, pretty much came back negative or whatever. Uh, Bruce Arians immediately said, you're playing. He didn't say, oh, no, we'll see. No, Mike, you're playing. That's Bruce Arians. Mike Evans, I expect to see him. uh, 40 touchdowns for for Tom Brady, but we know that if you put pressure on him. We all know that. Everyone knows that. So The Giants know that very well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got the formula for success for, for for Tom Brady, but I mean to be 43 years old though in the NFL at playing at that high level is pretty amazing. Like it's, you know, I know he takes care of himself, but um, Yeah, it's the TV12 method. <laughs> uh, it, it it doesn't help that Giselle is his, is his wife and, you know, a supermodel like that. Uh look, I I know that she keeps him uh on a short leash. Well, so <laughs> If you get a Giselle too, you better, you're gonna, you better play at a high level too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Ben Roethlisberger, 38 years old. Wow. Wow. I mean, the one thing about Ben is that Big Ben, no matter, he can have four or five guys on him and he'll shake them off and he'll find a way, yeah. you know, to get out of pressure situations. It's incredible. 38 years old though, um, the baby of this whole group. Uh, who doesn't play this weekend, though, is Aaron Rodgers. 37 years old, 48 touchdowns, and only five interceptions amazing. in 2020. Super amazing. Another California guy? Yep. Yep. Tom Brady, another California guy. You know, we get uh, California producing quarterbacks here, but um, yeah, Aaron Rodgers, is it's pretty amazing. Um, I think when they drafted the quarterback, um, you know, a couple years ago, whatever it was. Love, yeah. Love from, um, what was it, Utah State, wherever it was. Utah, from. Utah yeah. State. Another California guy. Yeah. The love is from California. Um, I really like... Look, I he, think it pissed him off. You know, oh, absolutely. It's like, Look, he's got yeah, Devontae Adams, yeah. who right now is Another probably yeah, the, yeah. the best receiver yeah. um, overall. Uh, but other than that, I mean, when Devontae Adams went down with an injury, he yeah. had basically third-tier receivers. Right. Uh, and, and he still did it. He still proved that he's a great quarterback. His whole career is at nobody, really. Exactly. That, that, that's I mean, why it's insane. I mean, he gets absolutely no help. Uh, it, during, you know, the, the trade talks this season, they said, you know, well, maybe he will get some help for Aaron Rodgers. They didn't get any help whatsoever. No. And, no. and he still got 48 touchdowns and five interceptions. To me, 
Uh, a lot of people think that uh, Mahomes is, is the MVP. I don't think so. I think it's uh, Rogers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, that level, hands down, that old. what he did with basically no help. Uh, to me, Aaron Rodgers is the MVP. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we we heard some rumors um, talking about the Sean Watson trade. I don't know. Have you ever heard the rumor? I'm just a rumor out there. I just saw- it, it, it's a rumor, but Deshaun Watson is PO'd completely. Why? Because last year they didn't consult them uh, in the trade talks that sent. Um, they sent as well. Oh, Cooks. They got Cooks for. No, they got from Arizona. Arizona. Right. Trade. Yeah. Um, but they sent DeAndre Hopkins to Arizona. Right. And they didn't consult them. They didn't say anything to him. All of a sudden he finds out. His that his receiver. number one guy is gone. Yeah. Okay? So you stay with William Fuller at the time, which was his number one receiver after that. Then they picked up Cooks. And they picked up, then they picked up Cooks, who did yeah. well for him this yeah. year. Uh, they developed a good rapport. However, then they hire a GM. Um, and it's... This week, right? This week. From they the just Patriots. Hired, from the Patriots. Yeah. He didn't like it one bit. Not only that, but they didn't tell him... That they were going to hire this guy. Oh wow! So it's this rumor, is there's a rumor that he recommended some people. And yeah, they, they didn't. They blew. They didn't even entertain it. No, they didn't yeah. even entertain oh. it. Well, they wanted uh, this guy. Uh, what's his name again? Um, I don't know. I, I'm blanking out. Uh, I don't know. But if, if it's your franchise quarterback and and they're not even entertain, I mean, it looks like there's bad bad blood, bad relationship already. Like in business, you, you got to communicate. And they, they call the NFL a business, right? It's a business. That's right. And, it's Nick Casario. Right. Nick Casario, who last year, um, the Texans wanted to bring him in. Um, and they couldn't because of something. Uh, that's with, who he wanted? Yes. No, oh. no. That, that's who the Texans have wanted for the oh, last okay. two years. This year, they got him. And they didn't consult uh, Deshaun Watson. Um, I don't think he's going to be the type of player that is going to... Um, be a, a dis, you know, disturbance, disturbance yeah. Yeah. And, and he's going to actually demand a trade. He wants a trade. He already said it, yeah. that he wants a trade. Um, and a lot of people, to me, would be crazy if they don't pursue that opportunity. I mean, the, Deshaun Watson and another team yeah. could be incredible. To me, the Jaguars, I would package the number one pick and whatever else they, they can throw at Houston and go get Deshaun Watson. Really? He would turn them around. I don't care about Trevor Lawrence, Sunshine Boy. Uh, look, he's got great hair. Whatever. But uh, to me, you get Deshaun Watson with those receivers in in Jacksonville. Jacksonville yeah. and, and I think that brings him up a notch. However, that's not going to happen. And you know why? Because it's the same division. It's the AFC South. Right. And you don't trade within your division. The Texans would be absolutely crazy to do it, but they've done stupid shit before. You know, they sent DeAndre Hopkins to Arizona. Yeah. Uh, so. So you never know. So you never know. There's a but, rumor out there too that Urban Meyer is. They're looking to. They're looking they're, at Urban Meyer Urban to be Meyer, the, the the yeah the next coach in in, that would be cr- in Jacksonville. I can't see him going to Jacksonville. Though, at all places. I don't know. Um, well, it, he's it all in Florida. He's from, he did. He coached in Florida. He coached in Florida. That's yeah. right. He yeah. he was uh, the coach at the University of Florida. He was extremely successful there. Yeah. Uh, so maybe he wants to go back to it's Florida. Big money, I heard. Big money. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they would offer him the moon and the stars because you know um, he's doing well. A cushy job, you know, uh, being an analyst. Yeah. Uh, on TV, so if they can get Urban Meyer, that would be huge. And to get a Deshaun Watson, um, I, I I think that would have to come first, though. Yeah. Uh, the hiring of Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer, and then he would push for something like that. Yeah, well, we'll see. But I mean, we'll see. But now we're uh, that's enough of football. I guess we're going to move on here and talk about some other sports. Um, there's rumor out there about the Supersonics going back to Seattle. You hear about that? Well, it's been talked about for a long time. You know, uh, not only that, but I think now with uh, the COVID situation and all the money that the NBA has lost and the problems that they had with China as well before, right, right. Uh, they've lost billions, billions of dollars, billion, yeah. billions. So there's a speculation that there's going to be two new teams. Uh, one of them would be the Seattle Supersonics, wow. uh, which would That's be cool. great. I, I think the yeah. the Northwest needs to have yeah. a, a basketball team. Um 
they're going to have an NHL team, the uh, the Kraken, the Seattle Kraken. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, their soccer not? team is doing well. Oh, the Seattle, the Seattle well, Sounders well, are probably one of the yeah. most successful franchises in MLS. Yeah. Uh, so that would be great. Where does the Plus, other Where does the other team? NBA team go to? I have no idea. I have no idea. But what my my recommendation has always been this. Send the Clippers to Seattle and make them the Supersonics. Please get them out of the Staples Center. They're taking up room for my Lakers. Just get them out. Nobody like nobody wants the Clippers. Nobody wants. Nobody Clippers. wants the Clippers. Go back to San Diego. It's the team without a home. I mean, they could go undefeated this year and and win the championship and still won't be LA's team. Yeah, they could do it for five years in a row and still won't be LA's team. I mean, this is this is Laker town, Laker nation, and I think. The, the owners from Seattle, Microsoft guy, right? Got some, all the money in the world. Go, go back to go to Seattle. Take the Clippers with you, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, and call it a day. And Well, look, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, two great players. However, to me, they're not leaders. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, we saw uh, in the bubble, which to me is still an asterisk to whatever, you know, the, the Laker title, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, the on. Dodgers, you know, hey, 60 hey, games. I, I don't care. There's an asterisk right yeah, there because 60 games, it, to me, it, it's not the same. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit because 162 against 60, that's a big difference, my friend, a huge difference. But uh, Kawhi Leonard's not a leader. He's not a leader on the floor. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if he wants to rest, he can't play back-to-backs. I mean, give me a break. You're getting paid all this money. You're the franchise guy. They're, they're the, uh, you know, Steve Ballmer went out and said, you know, let's give this guy the keys to the kingdom, basically. Right. And he didn't perform. Right. You know, in the playoffs, he didn't perform. Uh, yes, he got a title to Toronto, but he had other guys there yeah. that had the cojones, you know, to oh. actually uh, fight and well, and and and, yeah. and beat the warriors well it takes webbles to win you know? absolutely so you, gotta, you know it's, what it is what it, it is it, it, when yeah. it comes well, down nice. to it a good serving of huevo rancheros is what you need in the morning <laughs> absolutely absolutely all day so now we're moving on to baseball here now oh, oh man all right i don't want to hear new it. york oh. is going crazy right now francisco lindor and carlos carrasco the pitcher who uh came back from leukemia treatment um, great pitcher as well, but Francisco Lindor, Mr. Sonrisa, uh, he is going to the Mets. He got traded to the Mets yep. um, from, uh, from Cleveland. From Cleveland. Yeah. And it, it's incredible because if New York, if, if New York, New York, yeah. you know, obviously the Mets need to yeah. compete with the Yankees. The Yankees, you know, have all the money in the world, whatever. But Francisco Lindor is a true superstar. However, he, I don't know if, if this trade, um, if, if the Mets are going to pursue immediately to try to re-sign him. Because Francisco Lindor is one of the six shortstops that becomes a free agent at the end of 2021. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, including your shortstop. I know. Um, you know, we've, we've got um, Trevor Story. Uh, Lindor, Seager. Corey Seager. Um, uh, who else? Is, uh, there's like six guys. Correa, right? Correa, Correa. Carlos Correa. Correa is another guy. I the mean, cheater, uh, Astro uh, cheater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah one of those. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're all free agents at the end of this year, so somebody's gonna have a great. Yeah. Oh, uh, Javi Baez well, from Baez from the from Cubs. The Cubs yeah. He's also in that wow. class. That's, so it's you're loaded. talking. F- those five right there, they're gonna get paid. I mean, they, they're, they're gonna paid. get paid. Like they're gonna go cha ching, cha ching <laughs> right now. And so, if I'm the Mets, I sign them. I do whatever it takes to sign them. Not Fran- the Yankees will. Francisco Lindor is a great, yeah. great guy. He's got power. He he's got speed. He's great defensively. Um, average. He's perfect whatever. for New York. He's a personality. The personality for New York. He's perfect. For he's New perfect. York. He's perfect. I don't know the Mets. I don't know, but the Mets are the Mets. But they have a new owner. We have, the Mets have, do have a new owner. That's right. That I've seen has been active on Twitter, and he's interacting with all the fans. And he's putting money. He says he's going to change the game. So who knows? Who cares? Because my Dodgers are going to smoke him anyway. So well, well, he got he got yeah. traded, you know, and Carlos Carrasco, like I said, adding another arm, uh, you know, to uh, some of the best arms in the National League. Right. Uh, 
so that that's going to be definitely to me the beast in the east is going to be uh, the Mets, the Mets. In, in National League. Well, let's move back to the West Coast. You know, the be- the best coast. Let's move back here. And I don't know why we're talking about these guys. What's that? About? The the Padres. <laughs> Well, tell you what, though, the Padres are coming for the Dodgers. Los Doyers. Uh, yes, the Dodgers have won how many consecutive uh, division titles? Is it nine? Well, yeah, that's why you, when people say it was a short season, who cares? We, we, it is we, a short season. We've Come been on. there, though. We 60, were there. We've 60 games there. as compared to 162. But we've There's got a lot cheated of things. Out. That, it, we've it, got, we got cheated. I mean, it's, you know. It's okay. We'll take it. It's our, it's our champ. We're going to hang asterisk our to flag. Me. Uh, Dodgers, you know what? Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, uh, some of these guys, their arms were fresh. You know, at 60 game season going into the playoffs. Um, I'm not going to lie. The, the Padres look good. And the Padres looked great. I mean, they picked up. They, who did they pick up? They, Snell? From- they, yeah, they picked up Blake Snell in a trade with Tampa. Our old guy, Darvish. Uh, uh, you, Darvish. Who lost who had the a, World Series for us. Yes, but yes. he. Well, they, come on. Not, he, he did. Uh, well, they were cheating. Yeah, yeah you know, okay. they, they, they banged the drum a few times. Yeah, yeah, you know, okay, they, they banged the times. trash cans a few times. A few and times. They, I know. And, and they knew what was coming for you, Darvish. But you, Darvish, had a sensational season with the Cubs. Yeah. Um, he was probably their best pitcher. Um, so they got him and Mike, then Mike Clevenger, yeah. who went over at the end of the season, from Milwaukee, from, no, from the Indians, from the Indians, right, right. But he got hurt. And yeah. so he's going to be rehabbing cause he had uh Tommy John surgery. So I don't think he's going to be able to play this year. Didn't they pick up someone from the Brewers last year as well? I think um, they picked up the guy with the long hair. No, no, no. That's uh, that's Clevenger. That's Clevenger. Oh, okay, yeah. That's Clevenger. Um, and they they've got great players yeah. too. I mean, they made some great acquisitions. They got great well. players. They play in a great city. It's a beautiful stadium. They also stadium. picked up uh, a Korean player who's supposed to be yes, I saw that. out of this world as well. Yeah. I, I I don't remember. There's a lot his of good right Korean now. baseball players. Yes, I go to Korea a lot for business, and they baseball is is huge. The K League is is, is, is huge. Is huge. So huge, you add yeah. you add Blake Snell and you Darvish. To that starting rotation, they only uh, lost Zach Davies, who is yeah. the guy that they sent over um, to the Cubs. So they, they have a superstar. Uh, oh, they, they also Tatis. they have a superstar there. Tatis. Oh, they've got a that superstar guy. in Tatis. You know, Machado's they've got already Manny, a big Manny Machado, oh, but Tatis, Tatis, Tatis is, is, he a Florida is guy out too? of this world. Uh, he's Dominican. He's from Florida. I think he's from. Yeah, I know Machado's from Florida. So, but the, these guys. I'm telling you, they're coming for the do- Lodoyers. Nah, we got Lodoyers. this. We Watch got out. This. Watch out, guys. Lodoyers for the first time. Uh, I'm saying if the season is 162-game season, there's going to be a new banner f- uh, at the top of the National <laughs> League West this year. You heard it here first. It's not going to be Lodoyers. We'll see about it's, that. It's not going to be. Lo- uh, uh, and you know what? Uh, speaking of the Dodgers, I don't own any Dodger gear. But today, uh, you know, because uh, Tommy Lasorda passed away, I, I wore something blue. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, Tommy Lasorda was baseball ambassador. Great guy. Absolutely. You know, uh, he spent 71 years with the Dodger organization. 71 years. That's incredible. You know, he yeah. was... Uh, a player with the Dodgers, I believe, for 14 seasons. He was Two mainly a, 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 a triple-A yeah. uh, pitcher. Uh, when he came up to the majors, he... He only started like eight games or something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, and he went 0-4. Yeah. Uh, three with the Dodgers and one with uh, Kansas City, I believe. He moved out here from Brooklyn to yep. L.A. Yeah. Uh, he was, he, you know, he signed with, with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And then he was great, you know, as... as a, Charismatic, oh. a, a person as as there exists, he was go after the umpire. He would just oh shoot. he oh. he he literally lit, lit bled Dodger blue. Absolutely, he literally bled Dodger blue. Yeah, and you know he he was uh, he became the manager of the Dodgers in 1976. Mm-hmm. Um, he went on to do great things. You know he took him to the uh, World Series four times, one at an 81, one at an 88. Uh, when they were, I think they were outclassed as, as far as talent is concerned to the Oakland A's who had won 104 games yeah. that year. Um, and, and then, you know, one of the most miraculous 
moments of all time. You know, Kirk Gibson coming off the bench. Uh, you know, Never forget Tommy it. telling him, all right, go get him. And, you know. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, 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 he's a big part of LA and our Dodger uh, community because even my dad texted me this morning about Tommy Lasorda, you know, uh, rest in peace, Tommy Lasorda. Uh, just appreciate all the memories. I mean, as when you're born and raised in LA as a little kid, you go to Dodger games and it's such part, it's, it's just ingrained in you. And uh, Tommy brought so many great memories to LA and, and uh, now we got a big Dodger fan in heaven overlooking us. And that's why 2021, we're going to dedicate this season to Mr. Tommy Lasorda. And I'm just happy that we, he was able to see us win the World Series. That's right. Yes. He was that's, actually there. That's that's the one thing he did want. He, he was in Arlington. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes. He, Even he, he actually, was sick. He, he was, still, he was sick and, and he flew out there to see the COVID Dodgers. COVID and everything. He was The still, Dodgers win. Yeah, you know, so good for him. Good rest for in him. Peace, Tommy and go blue up there. You know, that that's the type of manager that I miss. No. The guy that goes by... By what he sees, what he feels, none of this, you know, cyber metrics, computer bullshit nah, that's going <laughs> on right now. You know, Dave Roberts, you know, uh, uh, taking pitchers out, you know, when they're not supposed to. Uh, oh my God, you pitched five innings. All right, go, you know, go into the uh, go into the clubhouse and have your lechita and whatever. Which the World Series, he kind of didn't do that at the end. He left Urias well, well, in there. Exactly. You know, and, and the, the ones that did do it was the, the Rays. The Rays did it. Because they took out Blake Snell, at, you know, basically dominating the Dodgers over five innings. And, you know, the Dodgers get a hit. And then so they go and they take them out. That, Ridiculous. That's all that metric. Ridiculous. Whatever. But they're, they're going to yeah. see their share of Blake Snell this year with the, with the Padres. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see. All right. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see. So moving on here, let's talk about now we there was a big fight this last weekend. You and I, we saw it together. Yep. And um, I don't know if it was a big fight. I mean, well, it, was well, a, it, it was a it was a it was the only fight on TV. Tell right? you what, <laughs> tell you what, this kid Ryan Garcia, um, he brings a lot of people. He's a crossover star. As much as right. I hate to admit it, he's a crossover star. He gets people watching. Just be, he's got over. 8 million followers on Instagram. He became Insta famous. You know, he wasn't, you know, uh, somebody who knew who he was as far as a boxer is concerned. He made his fame uh, on Instagram punching the Cobra bag, you know, the, the one that, you know, he's very quick. But there's one thing about, you know, hitting the bag, hitting the heavy bag, hitting one of those Cobra bags, the speed bags, when somebody's not trying to take your head off. Right. Uh, but he... You know, he fought uh, Luke Coolhands Campbell, the, the Brit, uh, this weekend. Who he knocked him down. Who knocked him down. However, you know, even though Luke Campbell was a gold medal winner in the Olympics, he doesn't have uh, the power or, I believe, the movement and the quickness that some of the other guys at 135 have. You know, a, a lot of people are, are saying uh, that, you know, now Ryan Garcia is one of the elite boxers. Ah, tantito, hold on. Espera tu momento. He says he's the next De La Hoya. Oh, yeah, well, he is. I mean, if you look at him, he's very carita. Yes, you know, he's a good looking kid. But, yeah. you know, that, that doesn't win, you know, uh, fights. That doesn't win fights. Yes, he's going to bring people to the seats. You know, he's, he's, he's definitely someone who's going to get people interested in boxing. I, I've seen people on Twitter... That I would never, and, and other uh, platforms of social media that are very aware of Ryan Garcia because of his, you know, right. social media uh, fame. Yeah, even my daughter knows who he is, and she's not a boxer. She doesn't know anything about yeah, boxing. Yeah, exactly. My yeah. girls know who Ryan Garcia is, and they think he's cute. Yeah. You know, one, one of the times, I went to a Ryan Garcia media workout, and... All of a sudden, everybody start, started saying, oh, my God, do you see who's here? And I'm like, what are you talking about? There was a porn star oh, that went to check out Ryan Garcia's. Uh, she was thirsty. Uh, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> this guy's the, he was a kid, though, back then. It was a couple years ago. Uh, I'm not going to name the porn star because, trust me, she didn't look good. She did not look good. Does she have anything to relate with the 49ers or anything? Like, uh, you can look that up. Yeah. I, I, Jimmy Garoppolo, I think, knows a little bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he hasn't been playing well. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, hey, I, Ryan, I got I to gotta give it up to Ryan because he took the knock. He got knocked down. He got back up and he, he, he came back. And, you know, um, 
I get it. I, I like get it. I like Ryan. Um, he's quick. He's Look, a, he's uh, a hometown I, I, kid from El, from you know California here, the high Victorville. desert, high desert, and um, you know the showboating. I don't know coming out and the, what did he come out? Look, tell you, you what, know? I thought Nassim Hamed was coming out. Yeah, because you know he was carried basically uh, on a throne. He had the the crown on his head. Look, if you're gonna be that ballsy and come out, yeah, and, and like you know. A king, a prince, whatever, uh, you better deliver. He did, good for him. Otherwise, people would be lambasting him, uh, yeah, just like was. Deontay Wilder when he came out with his, you know, whole transformer, you know, outfit or whatever, which he complained at the end that that was the reason why he lost because it weighed too much and it took <laughs> everything out of his legs. Please. I'll never forget that. I was in Atlanta, Georgia at a bar by the airport while I saw that fight. I couldn't. It was silent. Everyone was there for going for for Wilder, and it was silent. It oh, was, oh, yeah, it was crazy. But you know, Ryan, you know Ryan Garcia. I mean, he's got everything. He's got he's got the look. He's got the he's he's quick. He's he, he's a little flat footed. Um, I yes. noticed that. But I, I saw that he's calling out. Was it Gervonta Davis? He's Gervonta called, Davis. He's, he's they're, calling they're out Tank. It out there, Tank. He's calling out Tank. He was on a podcast with uh, Tyson, right? With Mike Tyson, yeah. and they went at it. Uh, and you well, know, Davis was on there too. And Tank Tank oh. Davis also oh. said, "Hey, I'm ready to go." He goes, "You know what? But when I hit you, you're not gonna get up." Um, I think Tank Davis is vulnerable uh, because you know He's he only gets got like 12, he, 13 he, fights. He gets hit a lot too. Yeah. Um, Ryan has, and, and I think Ryan would definitely make this a very compelling fight. However, if Tank Davis Hits Ryan Garcia. There's going to be stars, birds. <laughs> uh, like I say in Spanish, le van a, le van a cantar las, uh, las mañanitas y también uh, <laughs> everything else. You know, estrellitas, pajaritos, va a bajar el telón, everything. You know why? Because this kid is not going to get up. If Tank Davis hits him, it's going to be like Leo Santa Cruz. Good night. I don't think anybody would have got up from that. Oh, upper, absolutely. Upper no, no, but, but that's, yeah. that's what Tank Davis... Uh, does plus he's got Floyd Mayweather, who I would I would think would help him train for this fight as well, just like he did against Leo Santa Cruz. Uh, and, and I think Floyd knows a little thing, you know, a thing or two about defense. Yeah. Uh, well, so how to run? But and, and this yeah. is the one thing I've said. Ryan has um, a great corner as well. He's got Canelo's team. Oh, yeah. Eddie Reynoso, Reynoso, who's the trainer of Canelo. They're trained down in San Diego, right? They trained down in San Diego, and yeah. he's helped them. Um, you know, that body punch that he knocked out Campbell with, they work on that. I mean, it, that, that's a mature, that's a, a older, mature fighter's body punch. That's like a yes. Chavez. Like uh, a Chavez uh, punch. And, he, uh. and he learned that because that's what Canelo does. Canelo goes to the body extremely well. He needs to learn how to move like Canelo, defense. How, that that's that, where I was going. Yeah, that's where I was yeah. going. It's one thing to have a great trainer who teaches you something, but there's one thing about working with a Canelo who's got probably right now in the game in boxing the best defense. I mean, you look at his past four or five fights. Guys are like missing. They're hitting air. They're yeah. punching air. Why? Because Canelo's got great defense, great head movement, great waist movement. He doesn't need to move around that much. Just standing right in front of him, you know, he's able, you know, to get the punches away. So that that's the one thing about Canelo. However, you can't teach that. That's instinctive. Yeah. You can't teach that. You may be well, able to, to show Ryan Garcia a thing or two about that, but you can't translate it. Just like Floyd Mayweather is not going to be able to tell Tank Davis to do something. Right. And, you know, and Gervonta is going to be able to do the Floyd Mayweather shoulder roll. Well, it's because it, of habit. They have already, they're accustomed to it. They're yeah, used to it. That's how they uh, fight. You, either yeah. you have it or you don't. That's the one thing. Well, the thing about Ryan, though, is that it's it's the flat feet. Like, you, you get hit when you're, you gotta, he's, he's flat footed. Like, yes. you can't be like that. Whether like Anello moving around, but he can't be flat footed going in with a fight like, like Tank. No, not no, at all. No. And, 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 you know, or, so people are saying that Ryan Garcia is, you know, one of the elite boxers at 135. Um, he got a belt, but to me is a paper belt. Why? Because it's a WBC interim lightweight 
belt. <laughs> we don't need that many. Like the UFC belt? No, you, we don't need that many belts. I mean, give me a break. There's three champs at 135 for the WBC. We've got Teofimo Lopez, who to me is the best at 135. And he should, you know, he's called the, like the super champ, whatever. The regular champ is Devin Haney. Yeah, it's why do loaded. we need why do we need a super champ, a regular champ, and an interim champ? That's Come a good on. division. That's it's a, ridiculous. That's a good it's it's gonna get good. It's, oh, it, yeah. it's great. And then yeah. you got uh Gervonta Davis, who is the champ for the WBA, who that's another uh you know boxing organization that makes up belts left and right, uh just because they want their sanctioning fees. Right. Uh but to me, we would go Teofimo Lopez. Uh then I would put maybe uh, Devin Haney uh, with a very close Gervonta Davis, and then Ryan Garcia. Out well, of those four, we will see. Uh, but I'm just glad boxing is back. Oh, well, boxing is back. Yeah, you we know? got some lot. There's a lot of good fighters out there right now, there's, and, there's and I'm a, excited about that because th- there's a lot of great fights boxing. coming up. You know, we we didn't see a lot of them. In 2020, because of the pandemic, everything had to be in the bubble. I'm glad that they were able uh, to have the Teofimo Lopez and Vasil Lomachenko fight. uh, Because this kid showed us that he's great. I I think another kid that's going to show us in 2021 that he's the real deal and probably the richest division of all. The welterweight division at 147. And I'm talking about Virgil Ortiz. This kid can box. And he can hit like a ton of bricks. Watch out for Virgil Ortiz. I really think that that's the guy that could step in right now with anybody at one seven, uh, at one forty seven, including uh, Spence Jr. Earl, Earl Spence, Spence Jr. Jr. I think he Earl could Spence go. Spence said he wants to fight Canelo. Look, he's at one forty seven. He needs to go up to one fifty four. If he goes up to one sixty right now, he's going to get creamed yeah, by Canelo. But that, creamed. But they, but but they want the big money fights, and they're well, coming. And he's I a mean, big money guy. He's yeah. a big money guy. And now that Canelo yeah. is a free agent, he's the big money and, guy, and, and he can pretty much decide who he fights with. He gave up his uh, title at one sixty, though. He gave it away. He's going to do. Uh, Basically, his uh, the the he, well, he's he, fighting giants, Canelo. If you see this fight, everyone he fights now is a giant. It's like well, yeah, he's fight guys. That he's got to go back to his, his. Well, he's gonna stay at one sixty eight yeah. though, because he he wants to unify titles at one sixty eight, uh, and he's going to fight his mandatory. I believe at the end of February, uh, Yildrim is the the guy. Um, they agreed to do that with the WBC, um, and then. He's going to go after Billy Joe Saunders, who's the champ at uh, for the WBO, I believe. And then he's going to go after Caleb Plant, uh, who has been calling out Canelo. But the last time that they offered him a fight, he said, oh, no, four months is too little time to get ready for Canelo. Give me a break. Uh, you know, if that's your job, you can get ready in four months for a big fight. Um uh, but we'll see. Caleb Plant will be the other guy. So uh, this year, there's going to be three fights for Canelo. Yildrim, then um, uh, Yildrim, whatever his name is. He's uh, some... I, I can't even remember his first name. Um, and then uh, Billy Joe Saunders and Caleb Plant. And then after that, uh, the one guy that I do want to see him fight as well is uh, David Benavides, who's a great guy at 168. He's no longer a champ. Uh, the first time, you know, it was he was stripped because of, uh, um, you know, they found uh, drugs in his blood uh, after a fight. And then the second time, he was about to defend his, his title, and he didn't make weight, and he lost it on the scale. Uh, stupid of David Benavides. He knows that if that's what you do, you need to be focused and ready to go. But that kid... Um, I believe also I would love to see him fight Caleb Plant and also Canelo Alvarez. Well, Canelo's busy golfing right now. He picked up a new addiction. I see. Uh, I see him on social media. We, we're gonna invite this guy right here. Is pretty good golfer, <laughs> and so uh, we're gonna invite him one of these days to to go out golfing with us and 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 school us. Uh, you know, in in his golf, he he's he's been playing good some good golf, uh, and and then you know we'll we'll ask else him. to do the pandemic. I mean, what do you? I mean. It's the only thing you can go. Have you play. ever been hit by a boxer? No. 
at, at all. No. I, I've been hit twice. You know, I've been hit by a golf ball. Jokingly. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, they've said, oh, you know, hit this guy. And I'm like, no, 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 just a little one of these. And oh, my God. I, and one guy hit me in the leg, too. Jose Luis Castillo was one of them. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, I mean, those guys, that's why they're boxers. You, oh. you don't mess with, with a boxer. Uh, what we're going to wow. do is one of those, one, you know, whenever we see Canelo, and if we do get him uh, to come out, I'm going to grab like maybe three or four pillows, put them around you, and, and have them go to the body a couple times. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how, how Angel feels about that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this, is, uh, this wraps up our show today, Jimmy. Uh, this has been a great show, and uh, you know this is exciting because we get to bring real sports. We keep it real here mm-hmm. at Talk Shit Sports. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and uh, we're just going to bring it to you Drop real. your comments, uh, your criticism. I know there's going to be a lot of that, uh, but don't worry. It's all in good fun. Just bring it all, you know? From, uh, we're from East L.A. to the Riverwalk to Calle Ocho to the Boogie Down Bronx. We're going to bring it to you. Uh, every week and uh, stay tuned for us to, to you know see the next episode and me Angel O and Jimmy Weed here and we are out but all, no I'm gonna do it's this all about one. the it's you about baby this one guys it's all so. about the you we'll see. it's all about the you <laughs> see you next week guys take care talk to you soon